today we'll be making soft pretzels. So here are the ingredients needed. As always, all the ingredients are listed down below. So let's get started. Firstly, you will need 1 cup of milk. Make sure that it's blood temperature. Next, you'll be needing 2 and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Next, 2 tablespoons of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. 2 tablespoons of butter, make sure that it's room temperature. And last but not least, half a packet of dry instant yeast. Firstly, make 3 wells in the flour mixture and add salt, sugar and yeast into each well. Making sure that the yeast does not have direct contact with the salt as it will deactivate or kill the yeast instead. With all 3 ingredients added, mix well to combine. Make sure to mix the yeast with the sugar first, then with the soap. After the dry ingredients is mixed well, it's time to add in your milk. Using a spoon, mix the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients until it all comes together and using your hands, knead the dough. When everything comes together, flour out your baking surface and pour out your dough. It's a very sticky dough so you need to keep the dough moving. So dust more flour onto your hands and the dough and knead it. After kneading around 5 minutes, it's time to add in your butter. Add your butter in the center of the dough and fold the edges making sure that the butter stays in the middle and knead your way through. This process will take a while as you will need your mixture to absorb the butter you have just added. You can stop kneading the dough when the dough is no longer sticking onto your work surface and your hands and it's very pliable and smooth. Next, grease your bowl with melted butter as this prevents the dough from sticking. After greasing up your bowl, it's time to add in your dough and make sure to grease the top of the dough. Next, cover the bowl with plastic wrap and let the dough chew and ferment for at least one hour. Well, I also added a damp towel so that it can create a warmer environment. But it's not hot in Singapore already! After one hour, it's time to check on your dough. The dough should be expanded and doubled in size. Here's a close-up look of the dough. Look at it! So cute! And fluffy! After admiring your dough, it's time to poke the airs out created by the yeast. After poking all the air out, it's time to flip it out to your surface. Oh my god guys, look at the bubbly bottom. This shows that the gluten has been awakened. Okay, we did it. The gluten is awake. At this point, you do not need any flour on your surface or your hands because the dough is very pliable and it's not sticky at all. It's very soft. Using your hands, flatten the dough out and using a scraper, cut the dough into equal sizes. In total for this recipe, I got 16 pieces. Next, using a damp towel, cover your dough. Now you work on one of the dough. <laughs> so firstly, roll the dough out and stretch it because this dough is very very naughty so we have to roll and stretch it out at the same time. After reaching your desired length, make a half moon, bring the ends together and twist them twice. After twisting them, flip it around and attach the ends with the opposite dough. And ta-da! You have a pretzel! Look, it's so cute! After getting a pretzel shape, make sure to put it on a floured tray and cover it with plastic wrap. Repeat the steps with the remaining dough. 
For me, I think that this is the hardest part, shaping the dough into pretzels. Because the dough is very, very knotty, so it's pretty hard to form it into perfect pretzel shape. But the more you do, you will get a hang of it. Like what they say, practice makes perfect. So after forming all the pretzels, make sure to cover it with plastic wrap or damp towel. If you're like me having extra dough or wanting to try something different, try rolling the extra dough out and cutting it into smaller pieces and ta-da, you'll get pretzels bite. Repeat the steps with pretzels bite. Putting it on a grease or flour tray and cover it with plastic wraps. Next, preheat your oven to 220 degrees Celsius. Next, for your water bath, you'll need one cup of water, one and a half tablespoon of baking soda. So first, pour your water into a pot and heat the pot at medium heat. While the water is heating up, add your baking soda. Once the water is boiling, add in the pretzels, one at a time. And using a scoop, pour the water mixture onto the pretzels, making sure that the pretzels is evenly coated. Once evenly coated, remove the pretzels and place it on a lime baking tray. Do not repeat this step as I found another simple method. So if your pretzels is out of shape, feel free to reshape it back. After the pretzels is coated, it's time to brush them with egg wash. Egg wash gives the golden brown coating on the pretzels. Next, sprinkle some kosher salt. And it's time to bake. Bake the pretzels for 10 to 15 minutes at 220 degrees Celsius or until they are golden brown. Once they are done, quickly pick them up. As well they are hot, it's time to brush melted butter on the pretzels. As butter gives the pretzels a shiny coating and most importantly, the pretzels will absorb the butter flavour. And tada, first batch is done! With what I said earlier, I found a simple method. Pour the water mixture into a bowl and just dunk and coat each pretzel. If you're like me wanting something sweet, try making cinnamon sugar mixture for your pretzels bite. Second batch are looking good. Repeat the steps for the other batch. For the pretzels bites, after I coat it with butter, I straight away coat it with the cinnamon sugar mixture so that the pretzels bite will be evenly coated. So here's my final products. Salted pretzels, cinnamon sugar pretzels, and cinnamon sugar pretzel bites. Oh no, food stealer acting fast. <laughs> so here's my big brother's reaction. So this recipe is fairly easy and it's fun to make. Not only that, these pretzels taste nicer than those you buy from the stalls. So do try this recipe out. So if you like this video, do remember to like, share and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. Anyways, sayonara.